next we're going to take a look at group policies and how we can get them to be effective on the workstations that we're applying them on. Okay, so in my group policy, we may change this to the default domain policy, but now I want to make a, a policy that affects a particular user or computers. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new group policy object on the OU that we want to affect. So obviously, um, if we want to affect the users in department one, we create a group policy here in users. Same thing, if we want to create a policy that affects computers in that department, then we create it on the computers OU. So if we take a look at um, some of the information that we, we want to make a change, we want to do like a, a, a drive mapping. That's one of the, the, the more popular ones that we use a group policy for. Because in our example, we had to manually use the net use command to map drive letter T to our department chair. But we want a group policy to do that automatically. Now, we can map a drive directly to the folder inside of the share. We don't have to map it just to the share. We can map it to a folder inside of that share. So this could lead us to creating a group policy for every department. So when they log in, those users will get that drive mapping directly to the department share. But the problem with that is if we have somebody that is a member of two departments. So there's, there's that. So for the, that sake, I'm just going to map them directly to the department share, and then they can navigate to the folder of the department that they belong in. So to do that, we're going to be creating a, um, a user-based group policy. I'm going to right-click on that. Actually, if I'm doing this for everybody, I probably could do it either here probably be the best place to do it. So I'm going to create new, um, sorry, create a GPO in this domain and link it right here where I'm selecting. So that's the option I'm going to select. And I'm going to call this map drives. So I want to create GPO names based on what the GPO is going to do. And you want to be careful not to create a GPO with all the settings because then it gets complicated on what that GPO actually is doing and controlling where that GPO is linked to. So we're going to have it start there. So I'm going to edit this and take a look at the policies. So when a user logs in, they're going to have a drive letter T mapped to their department folder. So is that going to be a computer-based or a user-based? There we go. All right, I think we found it. That's where it is. So in other words, you probably want to do a little research. <laughs> Every time you apply a policy, you're going to be looking these things up. So drive maps. Yes, yeah, so under user, preferences, windows, drive maps. So right click, create a new map drive. Thank you, there we go. So location, we can try to browse to it if it's part of the directory, or we can just manually type it in. So we know that it's slash slash 410 server core. Um, actually, I wanna double check that that is correct. Yeah, 410 server core slash department is my path that I'm going to use. So 410 server core dot my domain dot PRV slash the EPT. Okay, label it as, so the label is a, just a, if they hover over it, what it's called. So we're going to do department chair. 
And then drive letter, we're going to use the drive letter T so we can have communication. If we say use the first available, each computer might have a different drive letter available depending upon the configuration of CD-ROMs and other drives that are in there. So it's best in an organization to tell everyone, hey, everyone, go to the T drive to look at your department share or go to the L drive to look at this share. So using a specific drive letter and keeping a consistent um, sequence for that is important. Um, show or hide, we're not going to make any changes to these, so they should show up and be um, available. Action, we can either update, create, replace. Okay, so update, if they already have a T drive mapped to some other location, this will change it to this spot. So that's in case somebody else logged into this computer and used it and they had a different drive mapping. But you can do some other things like delete the drive mappings if they have one in there already that was manually created at a previous time. Hit OK. So now the T drive should be mapped on my workstation. So let's take a look at my workstation. So I'm going to stop editing this. So my workstation should be in the computers. I just want to double check. Go to computers. My Windows 10 workstation is in the computers OU underneath department one inside of my domain. So on my workstation, I'm going to log in as Sally. And I have two command line, command prompt windows open because I want to show this to you guys. Um, this one, I'm actually executing commands as Sally. And this administrator prompt, I'm executing commands as the domain administrator. So over here, when I'm Sally, I'm going to do a GP result slash R to read the group policy settings. And if we look at the group policy settings, if I start at the top here, I can see that the information it's reading for this user, there we go, is this is a member workstation of the domain. This is my local path where I'm storing files for this user, Sally. Sally is, their, their distinguished name is right here. So Sally is in the users OU inside of department one of the mydomain.prv. The last time the group policy was applied to this computer and or user, actually it's a user group policy, was on October 17th at 9.54. Where did it get it from? Server core. Okay, so we can see some good information with this command, GP result. Here you can see applied group policy objects, none. Wait a minute, didn't we just create one? Yes, but it hasn't been applied yet. So yeah, this, this is what I want to show you. Okay, otherwise the other information in there, but, but there is one group policy that should be there. Didn't we make the default domain policy settings? That should be listed there. That's there by default. But the user isn't able, because the user executed this command, the user's not able to see the default domain policy. I'll show you the command that can get that information. That's why we have an administrator command prompt. So the typical user is not able to see that. Okay, so other things. Um, the following GPOs were not applied because they were filtered out. We don't have any filtering going on. So right now we have no group policy affecting Sally. But it also identifies some other useful information like Sally is a member of these groups. Domain users. HR and resulting that she's in HR, she's also a part of the HR local group as well. So to get Sally, or, or, or let's let's do this comparison of the applied group policy objects. So the default domain policy should be there. So let's execute this command over here, GP result slash R, because we're running it as administrator. Now, it gives me an error message saying we don't, the user, my domain administrator, does not have a RSOP data. And that's the, the um, I can never remember what that acronym stands for. 
I'll get you that info. Someone can Google it for me here in a minute. But I'm going to use the command gp result slash r slash z. Because z is going to give me more detailed information about the group policy. Actually, we'll, and slash uh, user. And then we're going to do Sally Johnson. So we have to specify a normal user, not an administrator user. And then slash scope is computer. So we want to take a look at what the computer settings are. All right, we got some good information here now to look at. So first thing I want to look at is here now my applied group policy. So is the default domain policy. And if we scroll down, we can see the account policy settings. So here's my 90 day minimum password age, lockout after three tries, three bad accounts, minimum password age, 14 characters for password length. So this, the, the slash Z gets us all of this information. So if I take that slash Z out, We don't have any of the finite details about this specific policy. And if I get rid of scope, I can see just specifically about this user, Sally. Now you can execute this command and you can identify slash computer and you can identify a computer name anywhere in your domain. So you like, I want to know what the accounting department's computer number four has for group policy. You can run this command from the server and it will go read that information from that workstation. Okay, so that's how we view information as an administrator to get all the information about the policy settings that are applied. Now let's take a look at how do we force. So if we just sit here and wait long enough, this workstation will go out and grab the latest group policy that we have set for drive mappings. In fact, speaking of drive mappings, I want to make sure I don't have one so we can see that it works because I manually mapped this, right? So let's go to the C drive here and let's get rid of this drive mapping. Okay, so we disconnected that. All right, so what we wanna do is, I'm gonna put this down here so we can see it happen live. I'm gonna force this computer to get the latest group policy settings. I think the default is, I think around eight minute mark. But we can either reboot the computer and it will have to reread the group policy setting, or we just execute a command called gp update slash force. And that will go out and read the group policy. And the group policy is map department or map uh, drive mappings. And you can see down at the bottom here the department share showed up automatically because of that drive mapping. So now if we want to see what the group policies are being applied to this computer, GP result slash R, and we can see the applied group policy map drives. And we have our department share drive mapping. So since this person's in HR, let's do a drive mapping so it just goes right inside of HR. Okay, so let's disconnect this. Let's update the, go back to my server, update the group policy. Okay, we have drive maps. properties. So let's go right to HR. So I just added the HR option there. We're going to update this to HR share. So even though the share name is department, we're mapping a drive inside of a folder further deeper into it. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my workstation. The command I type to update is GP update for group policy update and force. 
And we should see it now says HR share, driver letter T. And now I'm directly inside of the HR folder. So I have no idea that there's other departments. So just to double check, we're going to create a text file called new HR policies and go back to my server. And I should see inside of HR, there's my new HR policies. So that person was directly mapped into the directory. So you have a couple options there. So take a look at those uh, different settings. You can create a uh, group policy and map it to certain areas. And uh, yeah, play around with the group policy settings. Just uh, explore with a couple of them. Look up a few that are available for doing like screensavers and, and other things. I'll demonstrate a few more uh, next week.